Um, my name's Al. Uh, my buddy Eddie Jill and I came up from uh, Montreal, where we have snow to bring our from our brought our skidoos. But anyway, um, that being said, um, I'll talk about uh, some of the machines we brought up here. Uh, the one over here that everyone's closest to is called a Scandic. It was uh, built by Bombardier in Quebec, built for the Canadian Forces. Uh, was used up. Uh, it's a 1996 model, and it was used up to a few years ago. Then it was surplused out, uh, where I acquired it. Um, it's pretty much a standard snowmobile, with a few exceptions. Uh, you guys notice uh, the mechanism up here on the front? Okay, that's a wire cutter. So you can imagine if you're booting along the f the uh, trails, well, not trails, but the field. Uh, sometimes there's what's called field phone wire. It's uh, communication wire. It's strung out all over the place. Communication guys, they never pick it up, so it's all over the place. And if you're booting along at a good speed and you hit that wire, you're gonna get decapitated. So this is meant to cut that wire. So it's a safety thing. And you know, if you're going through a farm field or whatever, there's uh, barbed wire, it'll break the wire. Uh, this Scandic here, they made Scandics two different types. A wide track, which was a 20 inch track, and then there was a super wide track, which was a little bit more rare. It's a 24 inch track and this is the super wide track. The army only used super wide tracks. Uh, what's a little bit more different from the uh, civilian model is it's actually a little bit wider in the back for all the cargo you have to carry. So it's got, got about two inches on each side that was extended for the load carrying in the back. And it's also got a switch called blackout. Um, all military vehicles, you know, have headlights, but headlights in the dark during combat it's not a good idea right so you hit the little switch and it kills the uh the headlight and the scandic also has a backup alarm and it kills it silences that so it makes it a little bit more quiet uh fast machine a lot of fun uh it's got one of the best options you could have on a snowmobile heated handlebars <laughs> so when we're booting around keeps your hands warm uh, it's got a trailer hitch on the back, and this here is not a snowmobile, it's actually a toboggan. These are usually manually operated, right? So there's a, a handle here, flips out on the back, there's a guy in the back that steers it, and there's a couple of harnesses, which you put to a couple of men, and they would drag your stuff. So you'd have your tent, your Coleman stove, your fuel, all the stuff you need to uh, survive the winter in the back. Right, so we've adapted it. We've got we've added the uh, tow bar so we can haul it behind the uh, Scandic. Uh, over here, this is a 1974 cargo track built by Bombardier. So it's meant to carry fuel, ammunition. So you imagine it's winter time. The helicopter lands, brings you your uh, all your uh, supplies, but you got to get it into the woods. Helicopter can't land in the woods, so you load everything up onto this, and it would take it into the woods. It's a two track, right? And it turns by slowing one track down. So the, the operator would be on the back and he would turn left and right and it pivots around. It'll carry 800 pounds of equipment across soft, deep snow with no problem whatsoever. And it's very unique because Bombardier was developing these in 1974 for the Canadian military, but they never made them. They never accepted them for whatever reason. They only built four. They built four prototypes, and this is prototype number one. So it's pretty unique. It runs really well. Uh, it's got forward, reverse. And like I said, it's really unique that you know you stand on the back of it as sort of cargo and uh, drive it around. Just pop the hood here. A lot of people ask me how does it steer and a very unique system. So you can see the wheels up front. You have a reverse wheel here and you have the two uh, driving wheels. So you guys know on a bicycle you have gears, like you know the bigger gear and the smaller gear. When you change the gears you change the size, right? There's no gears, it's a, a clutch system. So when you turn the steering, you can see it pulls the belt farther down to the clutch which actually slows down the track and, and the other way around. And then when you're going straight, it sort of just equals out to about the same speed. So it was made with all off-the-shelf parts. The guys at Bombardier said, okay, 
we got to do this. How do we make it work? So, oh, we can grab a pulley here and a pulley there. And these actual pulleys are actually standard Bombardier drive pulleys that are actually on the motor. And they just put some springs on it to make it work. And it's uh, pretty incredible. And it's just flat bars of steel welded and chain. And it's nothing, like, I'm sure somebody can make this in their garage pretty, pretty Sorry, easily. Thanks. It's a 247 uh, Rotax. So it's the same as an Alain Skidoo, like a 1970s Alain Skidoo. It does about 10 miles an hour, uh, according to the documents, forward. That's about as fast as you can jump, jog, or, jog or run. So, And uh, it's pretty unique. And the fact that there was only four of these made, and I've seen photos. Uh, I actually talked to an owner who has one just outside of Ottawa. His is still running. And there's two other ones I've seen pictures of, and that's it. It's pretty neat. It's a lot of fun. And our uh, last vehicle here is the uh, Bombardier Alpine. It's a 1986 model. So these were used up to just before they brought those into service. So the Alpine is another unique vehicle. Two tracks. So th what you see is hitting the, the floor is almost all track. It's all traction. And it's got a single ski up front. Right? The reason for the uh, Alpines and they always said, you want to turn your Alpine, it's a 40-acre vehicle. It takes 40 acres to turn in a circle, <laughs> right? Uh, if you're going through the woods with an Alpine, the front ski prevents you, the single ski prevents you from getting hung up on a tree. So as long as you're on one side or the other, you're going to bounce off. And that's why you have this uh, uh, bush bar up on the front. It actually helps you deflect off the tree. Um, the Alpine we uh, picked up also has a, uh, a wire cutter, as you've seen on the Scandic. The history on this one we don't actually know. We picked up, used, it's gone through several owners, but we've uh, just finished repainting it, restoring it, and it's running fairly good now, but skidoos, right? Old skidoos are just more maintenance than actual having fun, so. And again, we've kitted this one out with all the equipment that it would have been used during the time period, so. Uh, if you notice on the Scandic, we have the C7 over there, and on the, uh, this one we have the FN. They both use the same radios at the same time. And uh, that's about it. And unfortunately, we really wanted to be bombing around the field. And everyone keeps saying, like, oh, sorry, there's no snow. And I said, well, it's a good thing, because if I was on the uh, Scandic today and I was booting around the field, I was going to do something stupid and jump at it and <laughs> end up breaking my sled and going home hurt. But uh, anyway. It's what it is, but uh, we really thank uh, the Ontars for inviting us out here to show our uh, machines. Thank you.